Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking With Me, and this is the first part of a Mother's Day gift that we're going to make. And also, this is for a couple of our, let's see, this is for maybe two or three of our subscribers. The one that inspired me to start this was Karen, H-O-Y-L-E, Hull. She said, a cardstock flowers in vase or holder. And then I had quite a few that suggested a uh, purse. Let's see. Uh, Brenda, W-A-U-G-H, WAG, uh, wanted 3D projects of any type. So this is this. Let's see. Okay, Mary Ellen said 3D purses, boxes, etc. So this is for Mary Ellen as well. And then Bill Sinks said mini album or something 3D. And th that was for Lisa. So I think that was the ones that suggested this. And so I got to thinking about it this morning. And I've not done a flower pot this large before. I've done one that was a lot smaller. Not one done one in this particular style. So I drew this out this morning. Uh figured out all of my measurements and everything all right let's get into making this project this will be a fantastic mother's day project they could also use this if they put a little plastic bag in there that wouldn't leak water they could put fill that little plastic bag with the dirt and also put real flowers in this if they wanted to all right let's get started we are going to finish up on our mother's day i call this a flower pot purse so we're going to finish up on this today. We made it yesterday, as you can see. All the information and everything will be over on our blog. And I have also created some free PDFs for you guys so that you don't have to come up with these odd measurements like I did. You can just copy the PDF off and trace it onto your paper and then cut it out. So today what we're going to do is make the flowers that go inside, make the handle and put it on, and then we'll be finished. So I have already made quite a few flowers, as you can see in there, flowers and stems. But I'm going to make a few flowers with you. Now these flowers I cut out with my Cricut. But I will have a free PDF that I have drawn out. Let's see if I can find my template. Uh, I don't think my template is right here. But anyway, I have drawn out some flowers that look kind of like this and some like this some that are just um, scalloped around I have drawn those out and they'll be on the free PDF that you can download if you don't have access to a Cricut or if you can't cut your flowers out the only one I won't have is this one I didn't draw one of these out that's a little bit more difficult it would take me more time and then this one I won't have one for that but I will show you how to make a rolled rose without having a template like this I can show you how to make one of those it's very very simple okay we're gonna start putting some of these together and I've just made different size layers and we are going to and excuse me if I sniffle a little bit today the allergies around here are about to get me I will try not to because that's very very rude but sometimes I do it and I don't even realize I've done that so but my eyes and nose everything is itching like crazy okay I'm just taking my bone folder and going over these little petals and bending them up and then I have got uh, Distress Oxide in Wilted Violet. And I'm just going over the edges, the little tips, so that it'll kind of give it a little bit of color and dimension. And then I take a little round, since these have a hole in the center, I'll take a little round um, circle. Now yours won't have a hole in the center. I didn't draw a hole in the center on the ones I drew out they'll just be plain but these did the ones I cut out of my Cricut and I didn't take time to go in and take the hole out so we're just gonna go with it I put quite a bit of glue down in there and then I just put these at different 
angles. I alternate the petals like that all the way down to the beady 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 baby one. There we go. And then let me grab my now I have to hold that for a second because this is art glitter glue. And I'm going to get a, let's see, I think that size will go in there. I'm going to get a, just a piece of bling. This is some that's not adhesive on the back. So I like to use it when I have things like this that I'm going to glue anyway. And I put that, put that little piece of bling in there. Now, once this dries, you can just kind of maneuver and manipulate your petals. But there's one right there. Now, you could use hot glue putting these together, but I found that hot glue dries so quick that you can't get all of your layers on there sometimes. Or I can't. You might can, but I can't. Now, this is a different shape. It's just a little six-point flower, star flower. I apologize if you heard my washer in the first part there. I forgot that I had the laundry room door open in my shop now, since we're all home, is right off my laundry room. So I had forgot I had that door open and I'm trying to do laundry too. Our shop, our main shop, where we ship everything out from, it's just out behind our house. But then I also have a place in my sunroom. This is our sunroom that I can craft from too. In case it's too, you know, the weather's bad or if I just don't feel like going out to the shop. On a Saturday, I'm usually in here. Let's see. Let's find another one that's not quite so big. There we go. Turn you over. And then we'll put him right in the center. This is our little pickup tool. Uh, I think a lot of you got those in your kits last month. Last month or month before, I don't remember. But I love mine. There we go. There's another one. Isn't that pretty? See how that little bit of ink makes it look three dimension and I'm not worried about that glue it will dry it'll dry clear so we're not going to worry about it now for these pink ones let me put this ink up for the pink ones I use two different colors of ink I used um, Victorian velvet and festive berries And I go from one ink pad to the other. Yes, I do. These, these two colors are so close that I don't think it's going to hurt anything at all. Plus, I need to re-ink anyway, so I'm not worried about it. Now, the um, Festive Berries is very bright, so I put it just right on the ends. There we go. Got that one. And again, we're going to put a good dollop of glue down on there. And then I need to roll these up a little bit. I sat last night and did a lot of these flowers, but some of them I didn't get finished. I got too tired. Tell me in the comments below what all of you guys are doing. Since you're at home and can't, you know, most of, of you can't go to work. and So tell me what you're doing. Tell me how you're staying busy. Are you crafting or are you just going outside and working outside or what are you doing? Let me know. My husband is about to work himself to death outside and he's not even supposed to be doing a lot outside because of his health, but 
he's about to go stir crazy in this house. He is not a inside person. Well, let's see. I have some pink ones somewhere. There we go, right there. These are some pieces of bling that I got from Fab Scraps a long time ago. And I am still using on them. And put that one right there. And then I just take kind of my fingernail and I roll those ends up a little bit. And it makes it look like that. And then let's do this one and then we'll do those rolled ones. Now this one I probably should have cut another layer for the inside. I didn't. So we're just going to go with it. It looks like just a big open flower and that's fine. This is dried marmalade that I'm using on the ends. It's almost the same color as this flower. So I'll show you what I do. Show you how I go back and kind of put a little bit more dimension on there. You know, you could use these without doing the inking on them, but they would be really flat looking. They would not be... They would not look too much like um, real flowers. So I take my vintage photo and I just go right at the tip and put just a little bit on there and that gives it a little bit more dimension. I don't even put much at all, just a tiny bit, maybe right on that tip there. Here we go. All right, now this one, I'm going to go ahead and curl up the petals a little bit. Now this one, what you do is, you see that little tip right there? We're going to pull it Pull that petal over and glue it together like that. So, just like that. And then I like to just take it and cup it in my hand and kind of pull it together. Like that. We're going to do this big one. So there we go. And then I've just got a, an oval, a big oval here that I cut out. Since this does have a hole in the middle of it. And I'm going to put that down on there. And then we'll take this one and just kind of insert it right in the middle. And then I'm just going to use one of these large pieces of bling to kind of put in the center there to hold it. Whoops! My finger slipped. Well, it glued to my finger. So there you go. There's that one. Isn't that cute? Now, this bottom piece, I go ahead and trim that off, what I don't need. I just trim around it. Most of this is not going to show anyway, but I like to have the backs of them looking pretty good. So all I did was trim around that, and then I'm just pressing that down to glue it. Just like that. And my little bead come out of the center, so we're just going to put him back in there. 
he's bound and determined he's not going to glue in here. You know what? I'm not going to glue that one in there because it's stuck to a couple of other ones now. There we go. Okay, we'll set that aside and let it dry. For these rolled ones, I take just a skewer, but you can take the uh, paintbrush. Uh, you can even use this, anything that you have, just to get that started. A lot of people use their tweezers. I'm not too good with that, so I just, just as soon use a little skewer. And once I get started, I go ahead and just put it between my fingers like that and roll. And these I did cut out with my Cricut, so it cuts that little piece at the bottom. Now, before I glue anything, I squish it one way and I squish it another. And then I kind of sit it down and I let it relax for a little bit. I, because I roll them pretty tight, so I let it relax for a little bit before I glue it. And then I go on to another one. And the more it relaxes, to me, the prettier it is. Unless you wanted just buds. Now this one is a little scalloped rose. Okay, here again I'm going to squish it one way, squish it the other. And then I'm going to sit it down and you'll see that kind of relax out a little bit. Okay, I think we can glue this. Just put quite a bit of glue right there on the end. Then I hold it down for a second or two. Just until that glue catches. So there is that one. And then this one. To me, that little piece on the bottom is not big enough. So I usually cut. I'm going to let this one... I'm going to pop it up and down and let it relax a little bit more. I got that center a little bit tight. There we go. So what I do is take just a little punch. This is a little one inch punch, I think. Let's see. Yes, that's a one inch punch. Take a little punch and I punch me a little circle. And I go ahead and I put my glue up under here just so that it'll catch that center part. But then I put quite a bit of glue right here too because I want it to be a little bit larger than what it looked like on there. Then I just hold it down on that for a second and hopefully it's not sticking to my mat. And there you go, you've got that one done. Now for the butterflies, a lot of my little uh, antennas on my butterflies didn't cut out and that's fine. Some of them did, some of them didn't. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna ink these and I think I'm going to ink them in blue because the butterflies on this paper collection is kind of in a dark blue. So I think I'm going to ink these in blue. And some of them I'll even use this side. So we'll pull that other antenna off of there. Some of them will just be antennaless. Antennaless. Boy, I don't know. That's not a word I know. Without antennas. There we go. And I just cut a bunch. I probably won't use all of these, but when I'm cutting something like this, I go ahead and cut the whole sheet. And that way I have them for future projects. And then I punched out just a few of the little ones that we'll probably put on some of the flowers. Okay, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do anything with these because I think that's going to be more than enough. So let me grab my blue ink. I'm going to use faded jeans. Hopefully that's going to be near the color. Okay, there we go. That's what we're going to do to our butterflies. 
So what we're going to do before we start putting our flowers in is we're going to go ahead and make our handle. Now you're going to need a 20 inch handle and I've cut one piece that's 12 inches and then this piece is eight and a half inches. And I'm going to glue them together just like we normally do when we need longer paper. So I'm putting it up in my scoreboard just so that I have that top right there to put it up against so it'll be straight. And I just glued with regular glue, just regular old glue. Get that out of my scoreboard there. And then we're going to take, I had already glued this piece, then we're going to take this piece, which is the inside of the purse, and we're going to glue it right there on that. I want to make a kind of a sturdy, pretty sturdy handle. So uh, we're going to glue these together and then we'll set them aside and let them dry well before we start doing anything else. And it's one inch wide, I don't think I said that, but I cut them at one inch by 12 and then one inch by eight and a half. So there is our handle and I think that's going to be plenty strong enough. Okay, we're going to set this aside and let it dry. And when it dries, if I start to bend it and I feel like it's not strong enough, I'll just add another layer of this paper to the back. But I'm going to let it dry for right now. And then we'll start assembling. Well, I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes in the sides for my handle because we need to get that those in there before we do anything else. Now I'm just going to use my pokey tool. I don't want to drag out my big crop -a doll So I'm just going to go through this real easy. I'm just twisting it back and forth. And there we go. And I'll tell you how far I came down, and then I just centered it up. I came down from the top two inches and one quarter. So two and a quarter inches is what I came down from the top. So I'm going to mark that on here once I find my center. Let's find the center. It looks about right right there at that little wing and then we just need to come down two and a quarter so right there is where I need my little hole I'm gonna measure this one more time yep that looks right my dad always said measure twice cut once Okay, there we go. So we've got those holes in there. And then I'm just going to use, I think, see how, ooh, that sticks out like a sore thumb. Let's find a different color. I may have to go for backup. Uh, let's see. There's some lighter pink ones. I don't like that either. Okay, let's try these. These are just some little cream colored ones. Yeah, I think that'll work. They're just little cream colored. Let's see if I got another one that looks like that. I think that one looks like that. Okay, we're just going to go with this one. So they're, um, they have a little silver outline and just a little cream inside. Who knows how long these have been in my stash, but it's time to use them, is it not? All right, let's check on our handle. Now that feels pretty sturdy, actually. So what I'm going to do is round the ends. 
and I'm just using my little punch, which I probably should drag out my crocodile. But I'm just going to use this one for now. Okay, now we need to punch holes in this, and I am going to use my hole punch to do this. I'm going to use the smallest hole, and I'm just going to punch right down here close to the bottom, like that. Okay, so we have those holes in there. And then I'm just going to thread my, <clears throat> then I'm going to thread my brad through both of them. And then on the inside, I'm just going to fold that over. Now I'm not folding it over real tight because I want it to, to be able to move. So let's do this end. find the hole first. There we go, right there. Okay. All right, I'm going to take my bone folder and just kind of press that down on the inside. Since we're going to have flowers and things in there, it's not going to be a big deal, but it, I have it pressed over so it won't hurt anybody. And now, what this will do is just roll over like that if we want it to, or it'll stand up. And once this dries a little bit more, I'll shape the handle a little bit better. I tell you, I think I'm going to punch a little circle and put uh, out of that same paper and put on the inside right there, just over those little brads. Like I said, I don't think they're going to show. I know they're not going to show once I get flowers in there. But I would hate for somebody to stick their hand down in there and get caught with the bread if they're changing out flowers and things. We're just going to punch a little circle and put it right on top of that bread. There we go. So we have that covered. Move it a little bit so that our breads won't glue down. There we go. Now we can start putting the flowers in here now i have this foam i don't particularly like it because it is that dry foam but this is all i have right now on hand so i'm going to use it i am going to glue mine down just because i'm not going to take this setting of flowers out of mine but if you're going to take your flowers out don't glue your foam down to the bottom just um Put it down with maybe a tape, a double-sided tape that's not too tacky, something like that, and then you can take the flowers in and out. Or you, you don't even have to put flowers in this. You could just decorate it up and give it to mom just exactly like it is. And then she could decide what she wanted to put in there. Okay, let's start with who knows what. Let's start with some purple here. I think, let's see if that's going to be, I am going to use these little wood sticks to put mine down in here with. Uh, you can al always use floral wire. I have some of that, but I'm not going to drag it out and do this because I'm planning on filling mine in enough that you're not going to be able to see the wood. So just do whichever one you prefer. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of glue on the back. I am going to stick this down. Now you could come back with a another circle and put on top of that if you wanted. But like I said, I plan on putting enough of these in here to fill everything up on all sides so that I won't have to do that. So I'm just going to continue with this and just make a bouquet.
All right, so here is our arrangement. Now, I ended up making mine so high that my handle won't fold back and forth. So if you're gonna make yours this high, I would suggest that you go ahead and make your handle 24 instead of, uh, I think I said 18. I may add a little bit onto my handle, I'm not sure, but um, it still works, it still holds it and everything, but it, it just won't fold over, which is not a big deal to me because I may end up putting some beads or something on my handle anyway. But that is it, that is our purse. We're calling it a purse flower pot for Mother's Day. And then I think I may put, do a couple more rolled flowers and put them here and um, then put Happy Mother's Day. But to, And I'll give it to one of my daughters because my mother has been gone for many, many years. But I think that is cute and it's not hard to make it all. Like I said, I'll have as many PDFs for this over on my blog as I can. I did go ahead and do both sides so that whichever side you're looking at it from it's still filled up so that is it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to our channel and we will talk to you guys later thanks so much for watching bye bye